Hello friends, welcome to the channel Mechanics of Solids. In this section we will deal with the thermal stresses and the thermal strain. Before going into thermal stress and thermal strain, we will learn something about thermal expansion. Consider a metal bar here. If we supply heat to this metal bar, we know that the length of the metal bar can vary. In the same time area can vary, in the same time the volume can also vary. So, during heating of a metal, the length varies according to the relation L is equal to L0 into 1 plus alpha delta T. Area varies according to the relation A0 into 1 plus beta delta T. And volume varies according to the relation V0 into 1 plus gamma delta T. In this, capital L means final length after the application of heat. L0 indicates original length. Alpha indicates coefficient of linear expansion. Delta T is the change in temperature. Okay, fine. A is the origin, uh, final area, V is the final volume, A naught is the original area, V naught is the original volume. In this, beta is the coefficient of aerial expansion or superficial expansion. And gamma is the coefficient of volume or cubical expansion. Now, there is a relationship between these three, alpha, beta and gamma, that is alpha is to beta is to gamma is equal to 1 is to 2 is to 3. You can use this relation while solving the numericals if alpha value is not known because we will be dealing with the equation L is equal to L0 into 1 plus alpha delta T. And now, we will study when and where does this thermal stress and the thermal strain will generate. For studying this, I will keep this equation here, here alive. L is equal to L0 into 1 plus alpha delta T. Now, we will study what is thermal stress and what is thermal strain. Suppose there is a metal bar and its ends are rigidly fixed here. Now try to apply the heat. What will happen? The metal will try to expand, but the rigid balls will try to suppress it. Therefore, from outside there is a suppressive force or compressive force through the fixed wall. And that force is acting on this area. So we can say that during expansion or during the addition of heat, a compressive stress is generated in this metal bar. So on the addition of heat, addition of heat, compressive stress is generated. And now, what will happen if we let the metal bar to cool down? This is a metal bar. When the heat gets removed, the metal bar tries to contract itself yes but that will not happen because the rigid walls will try to suppress that movement so when it when the metal bar tries to go in this direction the walls will pull it in this direction so there is a tensile force acting on this ends so we can say that during the removal of heat during the removal of heat tensile stress will develop in the bar. So this tensile stress and the compressive stress generated in a bar under the under this condition is known as thermal stress and the corresponding strain is known as the thermal strain. Now we will go to find out an inspection for this thermal stress and thermal strain. We already have the equation delta L 
sorry L is equal to L naught into 1 plus alpha delta t. L naught go inside L is equal to L naught plus L naught into alpha delta t. L minus L naught is equal to alpha delta t into L naught. This L naught is coming to the denominator here. L minus L naught, final length minus original length is change in length. Delta L by L naught is equal to alpha delta t. And this is known as the thermal strain. This is thermal strain. That is equal to alpha delta t. We know that Young's modulus E is equal to stress divided by strain. Therefore, strain is equal uh, stress is equal to elastic modulus into epsilon. Therefore, thermal stress is equal to what? Thermal stress is equal to E into alpha delta T. Okay, fine. Now, I can find the equation for thermal stress and the thermal strain when the fixed end can also yield. This is our fixed end. This is my metal bar. Suppose under the application of the heat, this fixed end get deformed by an amount of delta. Our expression will vary. We have the equation delta L by L naught is equal to alpha delta T. So, delta L is equal to L naught into alpha delta T. This L naught is the original length. But, what is the value of delta L? What is this delta L means? This delta L means that the total expansion or the net expansion occurring to this metal bar including the deformation happened to the rigid end. So, the net elongation is equal to L naught into alpha delta T minus delta. Now, we can divide this delta L by L naught. Delta L net divided by L naught is equal to L naught into alpha delta T minus delta the whole divided by L naught. And this is the equation for thermal strain here. Fine. Now for calculating the thermal stress, we need to multiply the thermal strain with the Young's modulus. So I can write thermal stress is equal to thermal stress is equal to L naught alpha delta T minus delta whole divided by L naught into E. This is the equation for finding the thermal stress. And this is expression 1, this is expression 2, this is expression 3, this is expression 4. All these four equations are necessary for solving the problems. This includes no deformation or no yielding to the sidebars. Here the sidebars has yielding. These are the two equations under consideration. Okay. Now, I can study about composite structures, thermal stresses in composite structures. We know that a composite structure is made up of two type of materials. This is, for example, this is a copper tube. Inside this copper tube, rigidly fixed to this side, there will be a steel bar. This is the steel bar and this is the copper tube. The sides are rigidly fixed here so that whatever deformation, all the sides are rigidly fixed here. Whatever the deformation occurring to the copper will be equal to the deformation to the steel bar. So I can write expansion in copper should be equal to expansion in steel bar. Okay, this is my equation or statement. This is my statement. Now, what is this expansion in copper means? Expansion in copper implies what? Here also, expansion 
instead implies what? Still implies what? Smile. This is my case. Okay, fine. Now let us see the coefficient of linear expansion for copper is very high as compared to coefficient of linear expansion for the steel. We can say that more elongation occurs in the more elongation occurs in copper in the copper tube and here less elongation will occur. So what will happen? I will explain to you. Here is our rod. That means if more elongation is occurring, more elongation is occurring, more will be the compressive stress, more will be the compressive stress. So here more elongation means more compressive stress. And for the compatibility, wherever less elongation is happening, here tensile stress should generate. Here the tensile stress should generate. That is the theory part. So when you look in the question, if alpha value is high for the copper, then a compressive stress can generate here. If alpha value still is low as compared to the other material, then its elongation will be less and the tensile stress should generate there. This is our case. And the net expansion in copper is equal to expansion in the steel bar that we already learned. What is this expansion in the copper tube? This is free expansion, that is free expansion, free expansion, plus or minus we can take. This is the case of the copper. Here, what is, uh, what, what is, what happened here? Here, compressive stress has generated since the alpha value is high. I can write this minus expansion copper is equal to free expansion due to heat minus expansion sorry minus shortening here what will happen due to compressive stress shortening minus shortening due to compressive stress minus shortening due to compressive stress I can write this equation also here. Free expansion means alpha delta T into L naught. Because delta L by L naught is equal to alpha into delta T. Now delta L is equal to alpha delta T into L naught minus. There is a shortening due to the compressive stress generated because of the high value for coefficient of linear expansion. And this we have the equation stress by strain is equal to modulus of elasticity E. Stress by E is equal to delta L by L because epsilon is equal to delta L by L. E will go up delta L by L. From here delta L is what? Sigma into sigma into original length by E. I can write delta L here. That is the shortening here. Delta L is equal to sigma into L naught divided by E sigma into L naught divided by E and this is the equation for expansion in the copper for a composite structure made of copper and steel. Now the expansion in the steel, the expansion similarly expansion in steel I can write will be equal to free expansion plus expansion due to tensile stress expansion due to tensile stress. What is that? That is equal to alpha delta T into L naught plus here less alpha tensile stress plus sigma into L naught divided by E. This is the equation and in this case alpha value for the copper will be different and alpha value for the steel will be different delta T will be same, original length will be same, E value will be different for this and uh, uh, stress value will also be given in the question. And by equating this, sorry, and by equating expansion into copper is equal to expansion in the steel bar, we will get the stress value. We will get the stress value 
in copper and steel. If it is not given in question, we can find out by equating this, the sta this statement expansion in copper is equal to expansion in the steel bar. This is how we can solve the problems in thermal stress and thermal strain for a composite structure. Okay, thank you.